With Kevin Love officially leaving the Cleveland Cavaliers last season, someone else had to take the mantle of being everyone's favorite annual trade target. And right now, that person seems to be Jared Allen. There has always been valid, long-term concerns about Allen's fit next to Evan Mobley, and Cleveland's loss in the NBA playoffs has only caused those concerns to grow. It's natural that Allen, the most expendable member of the core, has found himself in the spotlight this summer. But is there anything of substance to trading Jared Allen? Kobe Altman has suggested no, as the Cavs seem content with the roster they have retooled during the offseason. But that doesn't mean they aren't listening to offers. And other teams, such as the New Orleans Pelicans, have shown interest in acquiring Allen. The golden question, of course, is who will the Cavaliers get in return? That's really what all of this boils down to, because no matter how angry you are at Allen's performance in the playoffs, you're not trading him if it's going to make the team worse. So let's talk about Jared Allen's future in Cleveland and how a potential trade would impact the Cavaliers next season. Before we get into the video, please consider hitting subscribe and sticking around as I drop more breakdowns throughout the summer, and follow me on Twitter for more of my work with Write Down Euclid and SB Nation. The Cavaliers have been one of the best defensive teams in the NBA each of the last two seasons, and you'd have to be really mad at Jared Allen to not see how he plays a role in this. Allen is the defensive anchor that keeps this team steady. While Mobley gets all of the attention for being a legitimately jaw-dropping defender, Allen is an integral piece of the puzzle, and pulling him off the floor can and will cause the Jenga tower to collapse. The Cavs were a much better defensive team whenever Allen was on the floor. Even with a perennial Defensive Player of the Year candidate and Evan Mobley to replace him, the Cavs' league-best defensive rating began to shrink if Allen wasn't out there. If you traded Allen and relied solely on Evan Mobley to control the paint, you'd have to have a lot of faith in Mobley's ability to handle opposing centers, which at his size isn't really something you can confidently say at the moment. There's still a ton of weight being thrown around in the paint, and I'm just not sure that's a challenge Mobley is ready to accept for 82 games. And I personally think parking Mobley in the paint as a rim protector is kind of wasting his talents as a defender. Don't get me wrong, Mobley is as good as anybody at blocking shots, but Mobley is a wildly versatile defender. He spent a fourth of his time on the perimeter last season, contesting more three-pointers than anyone else in the NBA. I don't think Mobley is a full-time center because he's more useful as a forward who is free to roam as the ultimate help defender. Bringing this back to Allen, you really won't find a better 7-footer to hold down the fort. I understand he was outperformed in the playoffs in a way that was truly disheartening, but I don't think it makes sense to judge a player on a 5-game sample size especially when the entire Cavaliers roster struggled against New York. Allen is only 25 years old, and at his absolute best, he's supposed to be the third, fourth, or maybe even fifth option on this team. With that in mind, I don't think it's a major concern that Allen lost his individual matchup in one playoff series. Even the best players in the NBA have been defeated on the big stage, and when we are talking about a fringe all-star player like Allen, it's inevitable that he is going to lose a matchup from time to time. So while this is not an excuse and the pressure is absolutely on Allen to redeem himself, I just want to make it clear that one bad playoff series does not erase the last two seasons of Allen being a premier rebounder and defender. If you want to make the case that Allen doesn't fit long term in Cleveland, you should be focusing on the real concern, which is Cleveland's overall lack of spacing. Now I think Allen gets an unfair portion of the blame, as most NBA teams don't have a 7-footer who can actually space the floor, but with that said, the non-shooting frontcourt duo of Mobley and Allen, paired with Cleveland's general lack of 3-point shooting, has made generating quality offense a painstaking process for the Cavaliers. This was the bigger issue in the playoffs last season, with Cleveland scoring the fewest points of any team in the first round. Most people highlight the battle of the boards as Cleveland's downfall, but it was really the fact that they couldn't score the ball at even a subpar rate. During the regular season, the Cavaliers only scored below 100 points a total of 8 times, but in the playoffs, 
they scored below 100 in four out of five games against New York, with a season-low 79 points in their pivotal Game 3 loss. This was surprising, as Cleveland held a top 10 offensive rating in the regular season despite their lack of spacing. This is partly because the Cavs were able to consistently create quality looks at the rim with both of their big men ranking near the top of the league in efficiency. But with New York packing the paint to an even greater degree than what Cleveland faced in the regular season, the Cavs dropped from the 8th best to dead last in offensive rating. Meanwhile, their league best defense held steady at the top of the pack, reaffirming to me that Cleveland's issue in the postseason was not their defense, even if Jarrett Allen was on the wrong side of a rebounding beatdown. Instead, the primary concern was Cleveland's offense. And I think when you break down the way Allen and Mobley were taken off the board by New York's defense, it becomes clear why the rest of the team struggled to score. The Knicks prioritized packing the paint and limiting Allen and Mobley's opportunities in the pick and roll. Both Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell struggled to find either big man in the paint, which was a stark contrast from the success they had at setting up the bigs during the regular season. Allen and Mobley both ranked in the top three for points off cuts during the regular season. Meanwhile, Darius Garland led the entire NBA in assists on drives with Allen and Mobley being his two favorite targets. Breaking down the defense and dishing to one of the big men became Cleveland's bread and butter, with the Cavs scoring the fourth most points in the paint per 100 possessions during the regular season. But this number took a sharp decrease in the playoffs. New York took an aggressive approach to defending the pick and roll, oftentimes blitzing the ball handler and forcing Cleveland into turnovers. Their failure to hit Mobley or Allen on these plays made it all the more difficult for the two bigs to establish themselves in this series, considering neither Mobley nor Allen have built a consistent ability to create shots for themselves. Mobley in particular looked rattled whenever he was asked to create something. He fumbled the few chances he had to operate in the short roll, and ultimately costed Allen and himself a few easy opportunities to score the ball and build momentum. Both Mobley and Allen averaged fewer than 10 points per game in the playoffs, and the complete disappearance of their offensive game was no doubt weighing them down, as the Knicks continued to build and build energy with each defensive stop. As a result, I don't think it's a surprise that Allen's value diminished once the Cavs' offense broke down around him. Because while Allen is one of the best rim finishers in the league, that skill is only valuable if you can get him the ball near the rim. And with Cleveland's general lack of floor spacing, along with everything else highlighted, this became too difficult in the playoffs. That's why I think the additions of Max Struess and George Niang are so vital, not only to Cleveland's success, but Allen's long-term fit as well. Allen can be a top-notch defensive anchor and apply massive pressure to the rim if he is surrounded by supporting players who match his skill set. The reason Cleveland finished with the second best net rating in the NBA with more double digit victories than any other team is because when the core four is clicking, they are really difficult to beat. But the missing piece of the puzzle has always been on the perimeter. It's no secret why all of the greatest Cavalanche moments came when Jetty or Love were firing away from deep because even one prolific shooter is enough to open all of the great possibilities the core has to offer. If Max Struess is able to fill that role consistently, I think it's entirely possible the Cavs will make a leap next season and Allen will be off the hot seat as he is more free to do what he does best in the paint. If we can assume, or at least hope, that Mobley continues to expand his game and become more of a scoring threat, then Allen's job on offense becomes even easier. But if you feel like relying on Struess or Mobley is too big of an ask, then I understand why you would want to trade Allen for a wing who can provide the Cavs with what they so clearly need. Because the idea of trading Allen isn't a crazy one, but trading him as a knee-jerk reaction to the Knicks series or trading Allen for a collection of low-value role players is a dumb idea. The Cavs need to get a legit wing in return for Allen, because for now, 
he is still a massively impactful player for the Cavaliers. You might not notice Allen on most nights, but it's always noticeable when Allen isn't on the floor or playing up to his usual standards. Replacing him won't be as easy as you might think, and while Allen is still an all-star caliber player, his trade value is likely the lowest it has been in recent years due to his underwhelming playoff performance. So I don't think the front office will give up on Allen unless a clear upgrade becomes available, something that might not be possible. But it is possible the Cavs don't need to trade Jared Allen at all, as he still provides great value as a rim protector and finisher. If the Cavaliers continue to struggle this upcoming season, then I think you take a serious look at moving Allen for whatever is available. But for now, Jared Allen has a clear role with this team and should be gearing up to deliver a massive wake-up call for anyone who is sleeping on him. That's going to do it for this video. If you want to see more breakdowns and Cavs discussions, please hit subscribe and follow me on Twitter. Thanks for watching and go Cavs!